I guess we can get going. Good evening. Welcome to the uh, December 6th meeting of Bedford City Council. If you would please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Councilwoman Mizak from the meeting tonight by Januda, second by Sphinx. Call the roll, please. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. Sphinx? Yes. Januda? Yes. Blue Hardy? Yes. Asbury? Yes. And, Council, you have the minutes of the work session of November 15, 2021. Any corrections to that? Seeing none, we have a motion for acceptance by Janudis, second by Flu Hardy. Clerk, call the roll. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. Spinks? Yes. Janudis? Yes. Flu Hardy? Yes. Asbury? Abstain. And you have the minutes of the regular meeting of November 15, 2021. Any corrections to that? Seeing none, motion for acceptance by. Saunders, second by Asbury. Call the roll, please. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. Sphinx? Yes. Tanudis? Yes. Blue Hardy? Yes. Asbury? Abstain. And under old business, ordinance number 9914-21. Okay. Being an ordinance to make appropriations from current expenses and expenditures of the City of Bedford, during the year 2022 and declaring an emergency. You can have a motion for suspension by Spink, second by Flu Hardy. Call the roll, please. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. Spink? Yes. Tanudis? Yes. Flu Hardy? Yes. Asbury? Yes. Motion for third and final by Asbury, second by Saunders. Um, Frank? Yes, this is our annual appropriation measure for 2022. Uh, we've trimmed the budget as much as we can. We've had final negotiations with our unions that are included within this. And uh, at this point in time, I, and we've had Jennifer working on this continuously with me and uh, done a great job on this. So I ask council this evening to pass this uh, appropriation measure for 2022. Thank you. And Jennifer, our assistant director, is here with us tonight. So thanks for your work on this. This done. Do you want to mention what our budget's going to be for next year? The general fund will have an uh, appropriation measure of $18,033,730. The overall budget will be $39,348,720. Thank you. And I, and I think that says a lot. Uh, and I think I mentioned it last time we talked about this. That our budget is $39 million, which is a lot of money. But a few years back, it was $42 million. So what that uh, shows us is that the administration and the department has, along with the assistance of council, has trimmed back the budget. We actually are operating at a high efficiency for less money than we did just a few years ago. And I think that's a testament to our administration that's uh, sitting up here and to our department heads and the employees for uh, doing their part to, to lower their budget and keeping in line with running the city as uh, efficiently as possible. So good job to everybody. And call the roll, please. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. Sphinx? Yes. Janudis? Yes. Blue Hardy? Yes. Hansbury? Yes. Ordinance number 9915-21. Which authorizes the city manager to purchase a John Deere 1200A bunker and field rake 
for the Parks and Recreation Department and declaring an emergency. We have a motion for suspension. I think second by Clue Hardy. All roll, please. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. Spinks? Yes. Janudis? Yes. Clue Hardy? Yes. Asbury? Yes. Motion for third and final by Asbury, second by Saunders. Uh, Mike? Thank you, Mayor. This is a piece of equipment um, for our ball fields. We've typically used uh, a John Deere Gator equipment um, that is up there in age. It's obviously showing its signs it's been. Uh, Parks and Recreation Department has put this proposal in um, over the last three budget cycles. We have kind of pushed it by to the wayside. Um, we're looking at it now and it's something that we can fund. Um, and we wanted to try to get this through by the end of the year as we can we anticipate based on the vendor that these prices will go up. Um, it will need to uh, amend this piece as uh, the original quote that came in that we shared with council um, was about $35 less than what the current one is. Um, so I wanted to mention that, but our recommendation is to um, move forward with this purchase uh, through this vendor and, and get the piece of equipment for the department. Sure. Yeah, I would like to uh, amend the uh, dollar amount, uh, big increase of some $30, uh, up to 14424 and 80 uh, Motion to uh, amend as such by Asbury, second by Saunders. Call the roll, please. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. Spinks? Yes. Janudis? Yes. Blue Hardy? Yes. Asbury? Yes. And uh, call the roll for the third and final. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. Spinks? Yes. Janudis? Yes. Blue Hardy? Yes. Asbury? Yes. And we do have a presentation tonight. As you know, it's one of my favorite things to do is presentations and proclamations. And this is always a, a good one. Um, throughout the year, on Fridays, people at City Hall are allowed to dress down, dress in jeans, and they, they put a dollar in the kitty or more if they wish. But uh, uh, about every six months we do this. And, and the, the proceeds from the dress down day goes to the Meals on Wheels. So if I could ask Diana to please join me up front. chipped in and donate to you. I need to do this. Yes. This is good. Now what I do have to ask you to come in tomorrow. Is this a local <laughs> tree official? <laughs> but it's empty. I you. I think that was in my The check will be in the morning. So. But this is a token and I wrote the amount there so you can see Frank and get that amount tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> donations we've been able to extend that to six days a week so I never could understand that you weren't hungry on Saturday or Sunday <laughs> you know that your hunger stops on Friday um, but we were able to do it this year and that's uh, we've been able to expand in a lot of different 
different ways because of the generosity of, of our neighbors and the terrific work we have that it, it gets your hands dirty kind of work, sticky in our case, um, <laughs> from uh, uh, a couple of our council people behind me that um, show up every week. Um, no fanfare. Nobody gets out and claps for them, but they, they came. They came because they care about our people. Um, and that's a particularly, I have to mention, Vic, um, Flu Party, where we have literally taken him over his time. <laughs> he thought he was going to work one day a week, and it's now closer to four. Um, and uh, the mayor and, and uh, his wife, uh, Marilyn, uh, work every Wednesday afternoon. Well, end of the day on Wednesday. You're done by noon, though, which is kind of an executive kind of hours. Yeah, um, yeah compared okay. to Vicks. Yeah. And Sandy, Sandy Spinks has gone above and beyond the call of duty. Um, she has endured, um, she and Bob, his illness for this last year. And still they've come. Uh, they come often twice, sometimes three times a week. Um, because we're always looking for volunteers. I hope you hear that. That's the plug. Um, we don't pay anybody much except for a tremendous amount of satisfaction, which is pretty cool. And there's one other person back here responsible for more than a thousand dollars, and uh, that's Mr. Cambosi, who um, last summer was it last summer or it seemed even farther than that. Anyway, he held my hand through uh, my first grant. I had never done that before. Um, and uh, he, he was a good taskmaster. Uh, we got the grant and we got four more that uh, came from outside the area. So uh, it, it really helped to have that kind of help. You can't, you can't buy that kind of help. And so we want to thank you, yes, absolutely for the money but also for being the kind of leaders that we want, that we are happy to vote for, and that we are going to take advantage of as long as we can. Thank you. Okay? Yes. Very good. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Can I also say it's her birthday tomorrow? Oh, oh. happy birthday! <laughs> Seventy-five. All right. We should. Come on. Oh. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Diana. Happy birthday to you. time we see uh, one of the people smile when we hand them their food, so it helps. We do get that. That's worth more than, than any pay we can get. Thank you for doing all that. <coughs> Mr. City Manager reports. Thank you, Mayor. A uh, few items real quick. Um, our leaf collection is still um, continuing. Um, I know that there was something out there. Uh, we made it through the town uh, three times already. We're going through a fourth, weather permitting. Um, again, get those to the, the tree lawn. Try not to get them in the street, and our, our staff will come around and, and collect those. Um, a friendly reminder that this Saturday we're going to be having the Christmas in Bedford Falls event. Um, that will be downtown in the historic district. And I also want to mention that we will be having our Shop with a Cop event. And I want to thank, you know, all of the volunteers, um, all of the officers, and all of the uh, very, very generous donations that we've received from individuals, that we've received from businesses. We had some substantial 
um, donations um, that will allow us to help take the children, and then also we will bring them back and, and have a pizza party with them afterwards. So um, really, really appreciate it. And, and I want to just uh, commend our department. You know, normally we work with a number of different uh, departments, and um, they, they weren't going to do it this year. Um, however, our department felt the need that we should, um, and they decided to organize that on their own, um, and they're doing it for uh, Bedford children. So um, Chief Stumple and our guys over there are doing a great job, and, and thank you to everybody that's donated. Honestly, it's, it's, it was a lot of money that came in, and it, it's really um, it's impressive, and it's appreciated. Uh, we do this a couple times a year where we send out our auxiliaries, um, as well as our, our officers, we, we make note of uh, various light poles that are out um, with First Energy. As you know, regardless if they're on or off, we're paying for those poles. Um, we did send in our uh, most recent report. Uh, First Energy is aware of that. Uh, there were about 130 um, that were out citywide. Um, some of those are marked with the, with the caution tape. Um, and obviously when those repairs are made, we've requested that First Energy remove that tape. But if you're wondering why that, that uh, is why that tape is on some of those poles. Um, and we'll monitor that after the first of the year and, and check on what progress uh, they've made through our, through our rep. Uh, I also wanted to acknowledge that uh, it seemed like there was a little bit of an improvement um, in some of the issues with the trains over the last few months. For those of you that remember, we've had the train stoppage. Uh, City Council passed legislation, um, and we sent that information, um, the ordinance, um, letters, information to all the appropriate parties. And it did seem to improve. Um, although two weeks ago, there was an incident where there was a train stop for a substantial amount of time. Um, actually, it was almost five hours, I believe, based on the reports. Um, blocking those tracks. We had another incident last week. Both, um, both times we responded, we documented accordingly, um, and the line has been billed accordingly um, with that civil penalty based on the ordinance. So we are working to try to, to, try to resolve that. Um, and obviously, after that, that billing and that civil penalty goes out, um, we anticipate <laughs> communication from the rail lines. Um, and obviously, that's not where we want it to get to, but we cannot have them, you know, stopping at, at those crossings for that amount of time. So uh, I just wanted to share that, that we're aware of it. We have a, a, a policy in place as far as how we respond, how we document it. It's actually helpful that we, we have our cameras in, in, in our vehicles now because we document it through those uh, videos. Um, and that references the amount of time, so there's video evidence of how long they've been stopped. We don't sit there for five hours, actually the ordinance states that it's longer than five minutes. So we just basically verify that um, with the cameras, um, and then we move forward and we, it's documented, and then we issue the, the civil penalty. So um, we're trying to resolve that issue. We know it's a concern, and I just wanted to share with the public that uh, working with, we'll continue to, to keep trying to address that. Uh, end of report. Thank you. Law Director, Mr. Montello. Oh, no report card, I'd like to thank Ms. Moat and all the volunteers for Meals on Wheels and uh, wish you all a, help and a safe and healthy uh, holiday. Thank you. Finance Director, Mr. Gambosi. Yes, I'd like to thank Diana too and the council and everyone who uh, helps with that Meals on Wheels. It's a great cause and I know we've done it for 30 years now, help contribute towards that as employees uh, to your uh, cause and it's been well worth it. Great job that you do. It's fantastic that you help that many people every week. Thank you. Tonight we also have on our agenda, first actually it's the fixed asset policy. Uh, Jennifer's been busy uh, updating the uh, policies that we have with our auditors and uh, we'll be uh, putting that on the uh, first reading tonight and uh, passing that. Um, and then also the um, tax department. We've been working uh, on the uh, water discounts and uh, we have a couple people that still haven't filed yet that were on our list last year so be aware of that. Uh, the uh, discount program is still uh, there that if we do get your applications in on time we can get those discounts going uh, for you in the current year of 2022. Uh, that's all I have this evening. Uh,
Thank you. Mr. Saunders. I get two council meetings in a row, I get to be first, though. <laughs> but uh, that's, that's good for me. Uh, we have a house on Columbus Road. It's between Frank's Auto and the Shopping Center. As you remember, uh, we've complained about the fact that they fill their tree lawn up almost every week with rubbish. Now they just don't take their cans back in. They sit out there all week, and they've got numerous cans. So we need to get a hold of that landlord and get them to start adhering to some of the, the policies that we have here because Columbus Road is a fairly busy road and it's somewhat of an entrance way through the city and it, it just doesn't look good to have those cans, numerous cans sitting out there all week long. Uh, the other thing is, is uh, later we'll be passing ordinances on condemning houses, uh, one of which is in my ward, 65 Talbot. Uh, this one has been long overdue. It's been nothing but an eyesore. It's a shame that uh, it, it can, every time we get to this point, something happens and then we end up almost starting over again. But uh, we will be formally condemning that house so the neighbors off of Talbot and Berwyn area, uh, we're working on it. It's just taking a while. And I want to say I'll see you all on Saturday in downtown Bedford for Christmas in Bedford Falls. That's always a great event. And hopefully we will get a good turnout. And I know the weather's supposed to be really nice on Friday. I don't know about Saturday. But uh, hopefully it stays put with that too. Uh, another issue that we're having is on the upper end of Logan by Blaine. We have, I think it's the duplexes, the new people that have moved in over there. They parked their car on the street, basically in front of Beauty's place. And there's some days where two, three days, and they haven't moved them. So we may want to put some special attention over there that uh, they're not allowed to park overnight in that area. There's oh, two cars specifically that seem to be parked there all the time. And uh, we need to, that's a dangerous intersection to begin with. And you come around the corner and there's the parked cars all the time. And one other quick note, uh, I know there's been on social media talk about sewer rate increases and uh, Bedford's increasing their rates 4%. Just want everybody to know that if you've got regional sewer, good luck because theirs is going at the 18%. Summit County is raising their 16% and this is for the next several years for theirs. So. A 4%, we're trying to keep it to a minimum, uh, and unfortunately, as you are well aware, costs have gone up everywhere. So uh, we aren't raising the water rate this year, but uh, the sewer rate has to go up. So it's only a few, little bit of money, but I know if you're on a fixed income, a little bit of money can be a lot of money, but uh, we have to maintain the system. And uh, if, be thankful you're not in some of these other surrounding areas because they're getting huge increases. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mrs. Spinks. Good evening. Donna, I just want to thank you for your compliments and everything. And just uh, I always boast about what a great group. Uh, Mills on Wheels, we're like a family up there. We get each other's backs. Um, we always have each other's backs if someone needs a sub or something. And um, I wish I could, I wish me and Bob could do five days a week instead of three. But uh, eventually maybe we'll get there. It's just so rewarding. You get to know the people we do through different routes. So we're, uh, we have seen people, different people, those three days, Monday, Thursday, and Friday. And you just get to know them and they, they're waiting at the door for you and they're so happy. And so sometimes you do sit there and chat with them a little bit, and you got to remember you have somebody that's waiting for their meal behind them. And uh, so it's just a very rewarding and just such a great team up there. And I don't think Vic knew what he was getting into. And I was like, hey, Vic, you are to do this when he got on uh, council. We depend on him. He does all the 
he's our heavy lifter at Mills on Wheels. He uh, does that. Uh, Mike, uh, the last meeting we had spoken about uh, Cresswell, and I see one of my Cresswell residents out there, um, and you said you were going to find out about me about when we had the water main breaks. We, of course, we have a gas line out there and stuff. Um, they did come back out. I had called you because they had filled in the hole with the gravel and stuff, and I called Mike because my car kind of went in it a little bit. Um, I saw they did get out there and fix that. Did you check in? You said you were going to check in for me to see, are they, when's the last time? Because I know it's been a long time, but that thing has been completely redone. Yeah, the, I don't have the exact year when that water line was completely redone, but I actually met with um, our superintendent to the, from the water department, and I'll have a detailed report on um, a number of different things that we've um, that we put together from this year, from hydrant replacements to how many breaks we've had, um, to a capital program as far as where we need to focus on line replacements. Um, so there are some areas of town, obviously that, that is one area of town that we're looking at. There's another area of town up on the hill that we're looking at. Um, it seems that on occasions where we've had some of our most recent breaks, it's been on the, in those areas. Um, so we also have a inquiry out to Cleveland Water as far as you know, pressure increases and things like that, when they adjust those. So there's a lot more data that we have to put together, but we are looking at that area um, as far as when. I don't have the exact year when that was, um, how old that is, but okay. once I get all of that additional information, that is going to be included. Okay, we appreciate it. Thank you. I know it's been, we've had a lot this summer. I was over there. I noticed there's still, at the end of the street, there's still kind of the one hole that was done at the time before this one, it's starting to sink a little bit too. So I know the guys with the weather getting, you know, bad. I'll um, have that, that information will be in, uh, in the memo to council this week. I just appreciate all the residents being so um, patient about that and everything and understanding. So they've had a deal with a lot on that street this year. Um, very interesting uh, article in yesterday's paper in the Plain Dealer. Uh, about the uh, everywhere we go, we leave a trail of trash. Here's what we can do to help. So this, of course, this uh, Bob come running in with this article because he knows how I am about picking up the trash. Have been for years and years. And it says, <laughs> what caught me is that there's nothing you can do to stop litter bugs, but you can undo their actions by picking up litter, uh, uh, says a climate activist. And it's just a very good article in there just talking about, yeah, and I have people just the other day say, well, why are you, you know, why are you picking up trash? Why are you still picking up trash after all these years? And I was like, well, you know, someone's got to do it, and it feels like it's my community. I care, and it's just the thing to do. I know it's not everybody's thing to do if it's not, and uh, I've seen more and more people getting out picking up. Uh, Mike, I do have the information on those recyclable bags. I know we discussed uh, getting those in the city and using those in our trash cans, the biodegradable bags. It's a great company, um, very inexpensive. Um, I know the residents that I've given them out to have enjoyed doing that. So, um, see trash, pick it up, please, if that's your thing. Um, any report? Thank you. Mr. Janudis. Thank you. <clears throat> well, I, I just have to say that <coughs> Meals on Wheels is absolutely a wonderful organization and it's, it's just uh, really touching. Uh, we have <coughs> lived in a place where we've been able to uh, take food for granted for, uh, for me most of my lifetime, but now uh, things are changing in the world and talk of food security and food sovereignty are big issues now that we'll, we'll be hearing more and more of as time goes on. And I just want to thank Ina, of course, and all the volunteers, but, but also the City of Bedford that has done quite a bit to you know, do what they can to feed, uh, feed the people in our community and uh, the local churches too. It's a big deal. It's, uh, food is something we take for granted and it's unfortunate because I can tell you it's not easy to make it, and, it's, uh, and it's, uh, we don't recognize how difficult it is not only to make food, but how uh, precarious uh, the, the supplies are and how
how they come to <coughs> these supply lines, which we're beginning to uh, become more and more aware of. And I just think it, the Meal Center we also is just a wonderful organization. So that's the end of my report. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Fluherty. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Mike, you said they're coming back up for the collection uh, one more time, at least in the area. They, they, they started last week on the Ford Pass, uh, and we're going to try to get through it. Over the weekend, I noticed a lot of people put some in. They'll be able to go through pretty quick, because not everybody has them out, so that'll help clear up for the winter here, because things are changing. Also, I'd like to uh, see everybody, I'd like to see everybody now at the, uh, um, after Falls this Saturday, uh, another great event here in the city. Uh, for every year, for the past few years, and uh, hopefully the weather holds off. <coughs> and uh, uh, the Meals on Wheels, I also want to thank Don, Diana's uh, husband there. He does a lot of work with us, too. He doesn't get enough credit. He does a lot. So I want to say thanks to you, Don, because you helped us all out, too. So appreciate you. Um, I'm now a new member of the Lions. Uh, what's it called? Lions Club? Bedford Lions Club. Bedford Lions Club. Club. So I am now official lion. So whatever that means. But <laughs> you start out as like a conference. Yeah, I guess. Uh, I get actually sworn in tomorrow, I think it is. So um, the sad part is I'm one of the youngest guys in the club. That's the sad part. <laughs> we have but, a lot of uh, <laughs> So, but anyhow, it's another organization that does a lot for the community. So, and a report. Thank you. Mr. Asbury. Good evening, everybody. Uh, please excuse my voice. I'm, I'm trying to uh, finally get back to myself after having that nasty virus that's going around. So um, I want to thank the service department for the job that they did down on the square. Uh, the lights are fantastic. I didn't get a chance to go in person to the tree lighting because I was under the weather. Uh, but we got out this Saturday and was able to take the grandson down there. And he was just in awe. Uh, I had a blast running around. And, and, uh, we got some really good pictures and some videos. So, service department, thank you. You did a fantastic job, as always. Um, Christmas in Bedford Falls was mentioned. I just want to mention some of the things that are actually happening. Uh, from noon to 3, Santa and Mrs. Claus will be there. Bring the kids down. Um, they're going to have crafts for the kids. I actually got uh, a picture was posted. Uh, Bedford Downtown Alliance. Um, they're doing their make and take craft table. At 661 Broadway, that's right next to the uh, Broadway Cyclery, the old Salt City Dance Studio. So bring your kids down there. They can make their own crafts and take them with them. Um, they're going to have a, uh, an ice sculpture. Uh, DJ is going to be down there. The Bedford Historical Society will also be open from noon to three with some uh, with some people selling their wares. Uh, the Dunham House, also across the street, will be open from noon to three. And it sounds like they're going to be decorated for Christmas back in 1876. So that should be kind of cool if you got a chance to, uh, to stop down there at the Dunham House. Um, there's going to be some, some local businesses with deals. Uh, it's still kind of, uh, you know, you've got a couple weeks left to do your Christmas shopping. Hopefully we can do some shopping in person. Um, downtown area, we've got some nice local um, specialized shops. That, uh, uh, that would really love your business this year. It's, it's been a tough year all around for everybody. So if we can shop local and shop small and give these people some business, that's, that's a great thing. Um, BDA, Bedford Downtown Alliance, also has gnomes on the road. So what they did was they hit 10 different gnomes in 10 different uh, store windows downtown. And if you go and find at least five of them and you email your entry into... Uh, I didn't write down the address, but it's uh, the email for the Bedford Downtown Alliance. Um, you'll be entered to uh, win a 24-inch uh, HD Smart Fire TV. So go down there, check out the gnomes. I guess if you can get all 10 of them, you get an extra chance. So good luck there. Um, DuPont Base is having their ugly Christmas sweater contest on uh, Saturday, the 11th, 7 p.m. So if you got an ugly sweater, go check them out. You might win a prize. Um, Mike, there was, uh, had some residents concerned about a large pole that was put up on Lamson, uh, near East, uh, East Grace. Um, so we're under the understanding that that's, that's First Energy's pole, and they're going to be using it. There's some kind of a signal up on top of it, and what happens, I guess, is when the 
It transmits signals to, other switching, to the switching yard, which should help reduce the impact during power outages. Something like that, correct? Yes, correct. So um, I believe that is the only one that's going up in Bedford. Um, it's part of a uh, federal uh, mandate that First Energy is under. They're going to be going up, up around all over the area. They're um, huge. They're, they're large. What it does is um, First Energy, part of this mandate, they're really working to upgrade their, their grid altogether and how it communicates. Um, Councilman mentioned that um, these switching yards, when there's a power outage, these things, the, these towers communicate with one another. They'll open and close switches to where if there's a power outages, by them utilizing this technology, they can reduce the amount of individuals impacted by a power outage, and thus they can get the, they can get power turned back on quicker. Um, it is First Energy's poll. It is their right to install those. Um, I believe what I have found out, the next closest one is um, on Walton Road, um, right near Walton Hills City Hall. Uh, there's one put up there. Um, they're just starting to go around, but it, it, it's a tall pole. It's a tall pole. And at first, um, I was concerned. There's been a lot of discussion over the previous years about small cell towers and small cell towers going up um, to communicate. You know, everything we live our lives on these um, and data, and everything's data driven. And especially when it comes to vehicles, a lot of these vehicles, the self driving vehicles, they're all going to rely on data, which there's a huge push to start installing all of these small cell towers around. It time I thought that this was one of them um, and we have very specific ordinances um, law director Montello worked with a number of other law directors throughout Northeast Ohio um, on drafting this small small cell tower legislation um, to prohibit in certain areas you know they gotta they gotta um, submit applications so there's a lot that goes into that I was concerned that it was that um, but it wasn't. Our rep got back to us right away. Um, they're permitted to do it. I believe that's the only one going up in town. Um, I'm waiting for them to verify that. Um, but it ultimately is, and I forget the term they use, but it's uh, on, uh, I'm sorry, I, I don't have it off the top of my head, but there, there's a term. And it's, um, it's basically new technology that they're using to limit the amount of people impacted by power outages, and these towers will communicate with one another. That should be Sorry for thing. that long drawn out, <laughs> but if you see it, it's huge. It's huge. Uh, one other thing, real quick, uh, the the shop with a cop program. Uh, I've been involved with it for the past three years. Um, can't really do it with it this year, uh, but it, it, it's a great event, and, and the kids and the families really enjoy it. So I'm glad they're getting back to in person this year and uh, the pizza party afterwards. Um, to tie into that, Magna Wine Boutique, downtown Bedford, this, uh, for the rest of this week up till uh, the 11th, is uh, accepting toys for the, the uh, oh my gosh, Toys for Tots program. So they're accepting any uh, new um, unwrapped toys. You'll be, uh, if you bring down a, a new un unwrapped toy to Magna Wine Boutique this week, you'll be entered into a raffle. And items collect will be uh, donated to Toys for Tots, so I just wanted to mention that. Um, has there been any word about the SIG car shop? I've had a lot of people ask me. Not yet. I actually asked our building commissioner last, uh, about a week and a half ago, actually. And he was reaching out to the owner of one of the contractors, but I have not connected with him. Okay. And I'll share that in the memo uh, this week. Yeah, there's a lot of people interested, so. Uh, other than that, and a report. Thank you. Thank you. Um, much to add, so we're going to get right on to business. Ordinance number 9922-21. Which is an ordinance adopting the City of Bedford fixed as asset capital asset policy to conform with the requirements of the Ohio Rise Code, clarify procedures, and declaring an emergency. A motion for suspension. Saunders, second by Asbury. Call the roll, please. Saunders? Yes. Coaching? Yes. Spinks? Yes. Nudis? Yes. Blue Hardy? Yes. Hansbury? Yes. Motion for third and final. Spinks second by Blue Hardy. 
Um, right now. Uh, I'll address that. Uh, had Jennifer work on this and update the policy. We've uh, worked on this in regards to uh, what GFOA recommends. That's our Government Finance Officers Association. And also with our uh, the approval of basically the auditor's office and so forth, we've looked at our thresholds of what we record for fixed assets versus what we do for insurance. We still record insurance levels at a lot lower level, but we're going to raise our minimums for financial reporting from 2500 per asset to 5000 And we're also going to be looking at the new aggregation uh, rules and of accounting that we have to uh, abide by, and that will be when we buy things in aggregate, such as like 10 computers at a time, those, if they exceed uh, $10,000, and uh, we will then be booking those as assets as well. There's a couple other rules and regulation changes in here and years and things like that, but what we'd like the council to do is approve this so that we can put that into effect for 2022, 21, we're going to go retro, and we'll have it for this year as well as for next year. And forward. Thank you. Call the roll, please. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. Sphinx? Yes. Janudis? Yes. Blue Party? Yes. Hansbury? Yes. Thank you. Ordinance number 9923-21. An ordinance declaring the property and structure located at 32 Mapledale, Mapledale Avenue a nuisance and therefore condemning the property, ordering action, and declaring an emergency. <coughs> Motion for suspension. Mike Spink, second by Blue Hardy. Call the roll, please. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. Spink? Yes. Janudis? Yes. Blue Hardy? Yes. Hansbury? Yes. Motion for third and final by Asbury, second by Saunders. Uh, Mike? I might address this in the next yeah, the same I'll, I'll touch on all three. Uh, there's three properties, as uh, Councilman Saunders mentioned earlier, that we've been trying to. Uh, work with property owners, or in some cases they've been abandoned. Um, we usually partner with the land bank when we can. Uh, one of these properties, the land bank did have on their radar and they were working with us to try to um, address it and get it cleaned up. Um, we start looking at obviously if there's tax issues, that's where they really can help. Um, we've gotten really no movement from the property owners or um, individuals owning the, owning the home uh, or um, in control of the home if it's in a, a trust or whatnot. So this is actually, actually the, our first step that we take. It allows us to then communicate with the uh, property owner and try to further push this along to try to get these properties cleaned up. Um, in some cases they've been abandoned. Um, two of these um, are. Um, one of them we can't locate the owner. Um, as of right now, though, they're not, uh, all of them are not occupied. Thank you. Good call the roll, please. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. Sphinx? Yes. Janudis? Yes. Blue Party? Yes. Hansbury? Yes. Ordinance number 9924-21. Declaring the property and structure located at 65 Talbot Drive a nuisance and therefore condemning the property, ordering action, and declaring an emergency. Motion for suspension. Saunders, second by Asbury. Call the roll, please. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. Sphinx? Yes. Janudis? Yes. Blue Party? Yes. Asbury? Yes. <laughs> Motion for third and final. By Flu Hardy, second by Spinks. Um, again, Mike explained these. Please call the roll. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. Spinks? Yes. yes. Janudis? Yes. Flu Hardy? Yes. Asbury? Yes. And ordinance number 9925-21. Declaring the property and structure located at 132 Greencroft Road a nuisance and therefore condemning the property ordering action and declaring an emergency. Uh, motion for suspension. Speak second by Liberty. Call the roll, please. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. Spinks? Yes. Janudis? Yes. Blue Party? Yes. Hansbury? Yes. Motion for third and final. By Saunders, second by Asbury. Uh, and again, Mike explained this with the other ones. Uh, first step in uh, Possibly condemning these properties. So, call the roll, please. Saunders? 
Yes. Coachy? Yes. Sphinx? Yes. Janudis? Yes. Lombardi? Yes. Asbury? Yes. Ordinance number 9926-21. Amending ordinance number 9894-20, making additional appropriations for current expenditures of the city during the year 2021 and declaring an emergency. Motion for suspension. By Sphinx, second by Blue Hardy. Call the roll, please. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. Sphinx? Yes. Janudis? Yes. Blue Hardy? Yes. Asbury? Yes. Motion for third and final. Asbury, second by Saunders. Uh, Frank? Yes. This ordinance, uh, as you know, we update our ordinances all the time. Uh, we've been able to, I'll just go over a few areas that are highlighted here real quick. In regards to our recreation department, we did some construction this year to improve the building. So we'll be adding 30000 but we're also going to take that from the payroll area uh, that's not needed this year. So we'll be uh, balancing the budget there. The uh, mini court had hospitalization claims. We have to add 50000 to those claims, uh, some major ones this year. We have grants that we're getting from CDBG, from our SEAL funds. Uh, we have more donations and grants from uh, our Eagles, our Federal Task Forces, for fire, for police. Uh, we've had quite a few of those. We're adding those to the budget. Uh, we had a lot of overtime and fire this year that we're going to be adding 110000 in the budget as well as for payroll, uh, police, another 45000 in their overtime. Uh, we also had uh, some projects we're working on on the Broadway Engineering. As we start off, we'll be increasing the budget there, 50000 to uh, come, uh, to handle some of the engineering fees. Same thing on our streets program, about $61,000 we are going to need on the, uh, uh, between Union, uh, Ellenwood, and our road program. We're going to be adding that to the budget for uh, what we're finalizing with our programs. And we have finalization, our health, our health insurance for the city employees. We do need another hundred thousand dollars in regards to claims for their families and dependents. And uh, at this point in time, I ask council to approve this ordinance uh, as this evening. So we can put that into effect. Thank you. Clerk, call the roll, please. Saunders. Yes. Kochi. Yes. Space. Yes. Nudis. Yes. Blue Party. Yes. Asbury. Yes. Ordinance number ninety-nine twenty-seven dash twenty-one. Authorizing the city manager to enter into a contract between the City of Bedford and the Firefighters Local 1683 International Association of Firefighters, adopting the terms of the attached tentative agreement and ordering, ordering them into effect and declaring an emergency. Motion for suspension by Fluharty, second by Janudis. Call the roll, please. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. Sphinx? Yes. Janudis? Yes. Blue Party? Yes. Asbury? Yes. Uh, motion for third and final. Mike Saunders, second by Asbury. Uh, Mike? Thank you, Mayor. Uh, this is the um, last of our three union um, contracts that we are um, finalizing. The first two, obviously, police and AFSCME. Uh, the firefighters recently. Uh, we, we mutually came to an agreement and they voted and accepted that. Um, our recommendation is that City Council pass uh, this, this evening. Um, it mirrors the last, uh, the first two contracts um, as far as health care um, changes, um, moving to an 8% of the uh, premium costs. Um, and then obviously there's, um, it matches the um, wage increase over the next three years, which is 6.5%, 2% um, retroactive this year, 2.5% uh, next year, and 2% in 2023. Um, I believe it's a, a fair uh, contract, and we recommend um, approving. Thank you. Call the roll, please. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. Spates? Yes. Janudis? Yes. Blue Party? Yes. Asbury? Yes. Ordinance number 9928-21. I got it. Ordinance, uh, an ordinance accepting the dedication of Hubble Circle and Hubble Way extensions and declaring an emergency. A motion for suspension by Asbury, second by Saunders. Call the roll, please. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. Spinks? Yes. Nudis? 
Yes. Blue Hardy? Yes. Asbury? Yes. Motion for third and final. By Clue Hardy, second by Spinks. Uh, Mike? Uh, these next two are um, develop developments that have been in the works. We've um, put these streets in. They had to be constructed per um, city specs, um, which they have been. They, our engineer inspected them when they went in. Um, obviously, we maintain them, we plow them, we patch them. Um, we have to file this through uh, Cuyahoga County, and they request as um, being dedicated that there's consummatic action on that. So that's why this is here. Thank you. Call the roll, please. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. Spinks? Yes. Nudis? Yes. Blue Hardy? Yes. Asbury? Yes. Ordinance number 9929-21. Accepting uh, the dedication of Bell Court, the Bell Court extension, and declaring an emergency. And a motion for suspension. Saunders, second by Asbury. Call the roll, please. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. Spinks? Yes. Janudis? Yes. Blue Party? Yes. Asbury? <coughs> yes. Motion for third and final. By Flu Hardy, second by Spinks. Um, same same reason yes. as before. So we need for the county. Um, call the roll, please. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. Spinks? Yes. Janudis? Yes. Blue Party? Yes. <coughs> Asbury? Yes. Ordinance number 9930-21. Oh. Authorizing a contract with the Acuity v VCT for a new, serv a new server video capture system for surveillance and video management software for the municipal complex and declaring an emergency. A motion for suspension. I speak second by Janudis. Call the roll, please. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. Spinks? Yes. Canudis? Yes. Blue Party? Yes. Asbury? Yes. Motion for third and final by Saunders, second by Asbury. Uh, Mike? Thank you, Mayor. And, and we have the system in city in the municipal complex already. Um, obviously, this is a necessary upgrade to that system with a new server as this references. Thank you. Call the roll, please. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. Spinks? Yes. Janudis? Yes. Blue Hardy? Yes. Asbury? Yes. That comes to that uh, portion of the meeting for the hearing of citizens. If you wish to speak, please come forward, state your name, your address, and your comment. Second by Asbury. Call the roll, please. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. Spinks? Yes. Janudis? Yes. Blue Party? Yes. Asbury? Yes. Thank, Thank you all for coming.